And then uh, finally, I want to address an issue uh, that is a prevalent issue that we face as Texas Baptists, and that's the issue of women in ministry. You know, as associate executive director and as acting executive director, I do not see it as my role to speak on behalf of the convention. We speak corporately as, as messengers at our annual meeting, and also you speak as an executive board on behalf of the messengers in between annual meetings. Texas Baptists have tried to preserve unity and harmony by not delving too deeply into matters that are divisive, uh, unless it is absolutely necessary. And we have done a, a, a very good job at that, and I know we will continue to do so in the future. In recent months, we have received numerous questions from pastors, church members, and even executive board members about the topic of women in ministry, so I thought it would be appropriate to briefly address the topic this evening. As I do so, I want us to be sensitive to the reality that many women are currently serving in ministry roles in BGCT churches. Many of our BGCT staff are women serving in ministerial roles. About half of our Baptist student ministry workers are women reaching college students on 137 college campuses around the state. And finally, many BGCT churches are sending many female students to our Texas Baptist universities and seminaries to prepare for ministry, and we are providing scholarships for them all. So please understand that as a governance board, our actions and our words affect a great many people. So as a convention of churches, where have we been historically, and where are we today on the topic of women in ministry? Well, we are in a good place as Texas Baptists. First, Scripture guides our decisions and our thinking about this topic, particularly in terms of Baptist distinctives. Uh, we all know different uh, materials have been written over the years on Baptist distinctives, including written by our own uh, former executive director, Dr. Bill Pinson, a material that's used widely in our churches and also in Baptist conventions all around the world. The Baptist Identity Series focuses on uh, three particular Baptist distinctives, uh, doctrines that help guide our thinking on this issue. Uh, the priesthood of all believers, soul competency, and the autonomy of the local church. These doctrines help to inform how Texas Baptists think about women in ministry, but also they help us to uh, act according to our own interpretations. Next, I want us to think about the last definitive statement that the BGCT messengers have made specifically on the topic. And it was a resolution passed in 1998 on biblical equality. And in that resolution, messengers affirmed the following. They affirmed the freedom and responsibility of women and men to respond to the call of Christ to serve as they are gifted by God. They affirmed the priesthood of each believer in discerning God's truth as revealed in Scripture and led by the Holy Spirit. And they affirmed the freedom of each local Baptist church to commission for service all persons, regardless of race, socioeconomic standing, age or gender who were called uh, of God to model servant leadership. And then as recently as our own 2021 annual meeting, messengers adopted a resolution celebrating the value of women in Texas Baptist life. It was called the resolution celebration of women in Texas Baptist life. And it's a short resolution, but here's what it says. Whereas women have served Texas Baptists in numerous and complex ways, which include elected offices, faithful service on committees, local and foreign mission work, positions in higher education, as well as within local churches, whereas Texas Baptists continue to affirm and celebrate the contribution of women advancing God's kingdom, be it resolved that the messengers of the 2021 Texas Baptist Annual Meeting affirm the ongoing efforts of Texas Baptists following Christ's example of engaging, empowering, and entrusting women with the gospel. As we know, resolutions are binding on the messengers at that particular convention. So what does all that mean for Texas Baptists today? It means we have been a conservative, evangelical, orthodox, Baptist convention for over 100 years, and we will continue to be so in the future. Texas Baptist churches have spoken and continue to speak for themselves on the issue of women in ministry or women in the role of senior pastor. 
At Texas Baptist, conformity over the role of women in the church is neither a test of fellowship nor a condition of cooperation. We neither insist on uniform practices or ministry titles, nor do we compel the conscience of any Baptist to adhere to the conclusions of another on this issue. Of the theological issues we consider worthy of defining harmonious cooperation in the BGCT, the issue of women in ministry is simply not among them. We remain committed to advancing the gospel through the GC2 movement to share Christ and show love until all people have the opportunity to say yes to Jesus. So brothers and sisters, let us not grow weary and let us not be distracted by tertiary issues. Too much is at stake. We are stronger together and we have a state and a world to reach for Jesus Christ. We need to celebrate we need to celebrate the efforts of the Center for Church Health. Jonathan Smith, our Director of Church Health Strategies, is doing an excellent job working with dozens of pastors and churches in developing healthier strategies. He is expanding his strategy called PAVE into unique contexts of Hispanic and African American churches working with their pastors. And we are seeing churches turn around and become healthy and growing day by day. Let us celebrate the work of the Center for Ministerial Health. Just this past week, I was reading a list of thank you notes from pastors who have received the inflation relief grants. Let me share just a couple of those with you. One pastor wrote, we live in a rural town and we are 30 to 40 miles from the closest Walmart, as well as competent medical care. Food costs have gone up as well as utilities. We have had unexpected medical expenses that are more difficult to pay due to the increase in gas and food costs. This grant will help us catch up on those medical expenses. Another pastor wrote, unfortunately, with the rising costs of everything, it has made it hard on me and my family because gas prices have gone up, food prices have gone up, and honestly, cost of living has gone up, but our income has remained the same. So we have had to do the best we can with what we have. This grant is a huge blessing to me and my family. I could go on and on. We literally, uh, they shared with me 39 pages, 39 pages of, of different comments pastors have made all over our state, thanking Texas Baptists for these gifts through the inflation and relief grants. And remember, not a dollar of that comes from cooperative program giving. It all comes from the Lilly Endowment grant we received and also from private donations from individuals and churches for this purpose. What a tremendous blessing to our pastors. Let us celebrate the work of the Center for Cultural Engagement. You'll hear more about this from the Christian Life Commission tomorrow, but let me just steal a bit of their thunder because I'm bursting at the seams that Texas Baptists have been the primary leaders in stopping gambling in the state of Texas. There are dozens of issues on which we advocate both for and against in Austin. But this issue has been one that I have personally uh, become involved in. And I just wanna say thank you to John Litzler, our Director of, of Public Policy there at uh, the Capitol in Austin, Katie Frugge, our Director for the Center of Cultural Engagement, and all of those Texas Baptists who took time to write to their legislators about this issue. Did you know that one million young men in the United States between the ages of 18 and 24 year olds are already addicted to gambling, primarily online sports betting. Did you know that, the, that gambling addicts had the highest suicide rate among, among any other group of addicts in our nation? Gambling destroys families. It's destroying these young men's lives and their careers and their marriages. And Texas Baptists have helped to be salt and light on this issue and many other issues in Austin. Thank you for what you are doing. Let's celebrate the work of the Center for Missional Engagement. There may be a crisis at the border, but Texas Baptists are meeting needs on both sides of the border through our river ministry. And in August, I want you to know that a group of us are going to the African nations of Tanzania and Uganda. Under Dr. Hardage's leadership, we signed a memorandum of understanding with these two African countries' uh, national Baptist conventions to offer discipleship resources, training, and uh, they want me to come and talk about the cooperative program and help them get a cooperative program uh, set up there with their churches. We're gonna be preaching every night. It's gonna be a fantastic event. Tomiko Jones is going. Our own Ira Antoine is leading the trip, but our Center for Missional Engagement has been to Nepal, Brazil, Spain, 
On and on, I, I could go through the missionary adoption program. We are helping to spread the gospel around the world. And let's celebrate the work of the Center for Collegiate Ministries. They just finished a weekend of training for Go Now Missions this summer when hundreds of college students will be sent out on mission trips to share Christ and show love. We are reaching hundreds of college students on campuses all around the state. But I want you to hear tonight, we are sending out hundreds of college students to go on mission with God's people to share the love of Jesus Christ to be missionaries to the world. And brothers and sisters, that's just a sampling of what we are doing together as Texas Baptists. So please continue to be BGCT ambassadors in your churches and your communities. Help us to spread the word about the great things God is doing through us. And let's continue to pray, give, and go together to share Christ and show love until everyone in Texas and the world has the opportunity to say yes to Jesus.